Welcome everyone to another programming live stream. Uh, somewhat live uh, yesterday, the live stream was quite good, and uh, today, my uh, Docs internet here already saturated, so already excuse the uh, frames dropped by Vodafone. Anyway, uh, also, you probably want to share, uh, like, and uh, subscribe to the second channel because in 2021 I will probably no longer do this random live streams here on this channel and only in the more live channel there probably in uh, that corner anyway so uh, we have the stream of sometime soon having here some more low level code i've done already 3d or other low level programming um verge voodoo links 3d is uh, silicon motion link 3d number nine uh, imagine 128 uh, obviously the ps3 rsx and uh, given we're not the super most satisfied with the state of the monolithic nearly only single address space and written in c linux kernel and certainly all the recurring c bugs uh, the reason i've not yet like day and night written a microkernel i'm certainly still brainstorming and um, typing some content context and designing and uh, making some notes and thinking about this because obviously uh, first a little bit planning and stuff and uh, so one thing you might wonder with Rust, the latest and greatest language, we probably do this in Rust, right? And um, I probably have to disappoint you. Um, the more I look into Rust and do some testing and stuff, I'm not the super most impressed. Um, and the reason is multiple, and you can also leave me in the comments below what you think. Um, I have a couple of like three maybe major problems with Rust. The first is I do not find the language the most readable. Sure, I can somewhat read this. I'm not yet full-time Rust programmer, but given everything I see, I'm not even sure if I want to become a like full-time primary Rust programmer. Um, Rust was created web renderer, just some random files, just clicking around a little bit. And a lot of the syntax, um, you, sure, syntax and syntax can get used to everything, but if already after months of on and off um, looking at this and, and tr seeking some inspiration and trying what works and what does not work, sure, you can get used to everything, but um, a lot of things, sure, if and I means like functions, this is actually a quite good thing, but return values at the end, um, other stuff uh, like a lot of the syntax here of like yeah you sure you can read this but yeah um somehow i i don't know this is it, oftentimes a little bit cryptic um that is what leave in the comments below um and the people thought uh, c plus plus and uh, error messages are cryptic the other thing is the uh, slow compile time especially the larger your projects become the also ever-changing language even the redux as people of like they're yeah, spending weeks of weeks or nights or weekends not sure i think they wrote weeks whatever how many nights that accounts for adapting to new assembler um, syntax and um, so the whole thing is like yeah the other thing, and uh, we take some more, uh, take a cl closer look to Rust. Uh, actually, maybe we, we do this now. Here is Redux OS, uh, Redux, Redux, Redux OS. Uh, we had a previous video looking uh, into that, and um, sure, this let this is a little bit like uh, a lot of languages Swift and wherever that came first, uh, and not unlike our Lua thing here with local. Um, actually, this let I would actually say this let of var is better than this Lua local name. I can obviously criticize um, like even if I like Lua for certainly you can't write a bootloader or kernel in Lua but just as an example of something like not C++ that I also work a lot with I'm not a fan of this Lua local as a sled and var and stuff certainly much much nicer but in general um, also you have a lot of um, also many uh, unsafe right I mean you write stuff in Lua for uh, in Lua, you write stuff in Rust for safer and then like unsafe and whatnot and then obviously the code full with um, 
for this borrows with with get and unpack and it's like yeah um so in a long story short um or actually maybe we have him okay let's let's first share some more rust stuff here's a really cool article of uh, hacker noon from someone who has taken a look into that and similar to us um programmed here quite a lot on um on, on twitch and he has here a pr pretty fair summary and not, not even saying rust is bad i'm just saying the reason i will probably not use this and i was thinking from for month and making some tests and planning and stuff it's like yeah um i will probably even if i like sit here now like a month or two and like get really die hard into rust my impression today is i will most likely be 10 times slower in writing code instead of just like for example c plus plus and i'm not like given if i would have infinite amounts of time sure but given like eventually also want to get some stuff done it's like yeah maybe i for example rather use some c plus plus like some safer c plus plus subset and library uh, setup that uh, allows me to hopefully um, guesstimate right now uh, be 10 times faster especially i'm also not even seeing that this gets better with rust in the future given they uh, work on features so probably given here some examples of what we see with firefox with redux os breaking stuff on a quarterly basis and then not only being slow to write code slow to compile but then on a quarterly basis adapting for the latest and greatest changes they make there so this uh, summary here is uh, actually i would say pretty fair let's see if that pays there um, for you to give a shout out to other people so they have here a lot of good stuff um, also they also had somewhat a slow start of course like us they find good stuff um, bad stuff and, and ugly stuff um, some of certainly this is much more detailed but i don't want to repeat all these details I just want to summarize here the, the thought process of giving you some inspiration how to tackle big projects of like uh, even Swift. Uh, I've seen on Twitter a lot of stories, even big companies like one story on Twitter recently was from the Uber stuff, developing the Uber mobile app, um, converting from Objective-C++ to Swift and um, it's like, yeah, got super large super slow uh, massive compile times like humongous compile times and sure they eventually shipped something and they had to spend weeks and months optimizing stuff and um anyway just as in summarize if it's latest and greatest like swift rust and go it's not necessarily always super amazing and um yeah so they find of course a lot of stuff um in all the stuff he they t take a look at libraries like code libraries compiler um and uh, and so on and um also to give you some uh, summary yeah right so the other thing is which shocks me quite a bit we had a recent video um and also the reason i will pr probably not do this in in rust um is on top of all those features uh, or features <laughs> that i just mentioned there is already redux OS, right so i let those people there do the rust fun and uh, we focus on something else um certainly i don't need to copy there some other os written in rust but what really shocks me you, you people always think like yeah take rust and everything becomes amazing and this really shocks me look look at this um rmm a complete rewrite of the kernel memory manager oops sorry uh, memory manager um, this has eliminated kernel memory leaks, which became quite an issue with the previous memory manager. Additionally, multi-core support is far more stable. Um, it's like, yeah, so the Rust people tell us it's the latest and greatest, best invention since sliced bread. And then like writing a kernel in it and it's like, yeah, we have some memory leak and uh, not stable. And now it's more stable. It's like, um, sure, that is a young um, operating system and uh, stuff can happen. But there you see you write it in Rust and it like compiles certainly with lots of unsafe stuff there, which um, uh, do we have here probably like unsafe, um, obviously, right? And I'm not seeing looking at Firefox certainly and Redux OS, one of the better and larger examples. I'm not seeing myself like spending 10 times more time um, on stuff that 
I find less readable, way too verbose, and in the end of the day it's like, yeah, unsafe anyway, and obviously bugs can still happen. And um, as I mentioned, just for you as an impression, that doesn't mean you should never use Rust. I'm certainly open to uh, hear about your comments and impressions. Have you tried it out already? What were your um, experiences? Um, but um, so what, what will I do? You have seen my previous examples of C++ with lightweight embedded C++ and I will probably stick with that. Um, you could tell this old man yelling at Rust and um, sticking with stuffy nose. Um, but on the other hand, there are not so many kernel stuff written in C++, certainly the Linux kernel people always shout out of like, yeah, slow, whatever, um, not suitable. Um, sure, there is, there, there is stuff like L4, um, I think this new Serenity or what it is, and certainly others, um, probably Microsoft, uh, ETH, Zurich, Barrelfish, and also uh, someone posted recently a new one, like what was it, um, Amalgano something, uh, some, some fully joy is uh, sharing code. And the problem with Rust is you cannot easily share it much with stuff. And I said this already since a long time. So this is not like a surprise from uh, overnight surprise. I said from the very beginning, my goal um, with uh, actually could uh, probably open. Do I have this here still in maybe DOS? Um, let's open here some. Is this the, uh, let's just open here something, doesn't really matter much of this, or oh, we can actually use the link 3D, doesn't matter too much. And um, the, uh, so like yeah, X, X whale and, and, and whatnot, um, if it ever, hello, yeah, this is uh, resizing. All right, it's not in any way, not the size. Anyway, this um, DOS example, but the reason um, I want to share more code is that I said from the very beginning also with this kind of stuff I'd like when we re reverse engineer this or do stuff the first time like this Lynx 3D number 9 Imagine 128 Revolution 3D stuff um, and other stuff also as a Rosetta Stone kind of documentation exact, uh, also for this hardware stuff like documenting register stuff uh, for the or Matrox Pahelia, right? The more modern stuff or P3. Um, I said this before, I, I'm not going to write a full 3D stack for the P3 RSX in C and Mesa and Exoc driver. That is way too much waste of time for me. But if we write a full 3D stack for the P3, for example, RSX and other stuff, I want to be able to share the code more and uh, with that, that certainly is way easier in C and C++ than it is in Rust. And so uh, what I want to do is, uh, as I said this before, and uh, this is still after thinking more about this, still the plan, have like header files that are reusable. So if you want to write some uh, demo um, in even in some other OS um, hardware, low level code, 3D engine, like whatever the case might be, like the 8-bit guy, some game, uh, DOS game, Voodoo, or who knows what, or you other, like write your own OS for whatever, or just prototype ideas. And that is another thing, a lot of thing, of course, I don't have an answer for everything. I sh I'm i very much aware that writing a high performance, performance microkernel with multi-server and separate address spaces is much more challenging than cramming everything into a single address space. And for this, I need some quick prototype possibility and not like fighting like a week with Rust to do something. And that certainly is way easier in C++ um, to prototype ideas, uh, inter-process communication, context switching, interrupt handling, um, or even uh, virtualization glue of um, uh, supporting virtual machines in there or power virtualization stuff and all the stuff, even like small examples of some hello world, like think about uh, this, like this red and blue pill hypervisor stuff there. Um, I think prototyping this kind of stuff and testing performance, um, what we will do the next years here on this channel, because certainly I'm not crazy enough to think I write a full microkernel in one year. This will obviously be a multi-year thing. My hope for 2021 is to have uh, something usable booting in QEMU um, and maybe even 
a usable web server. Um, so meaning virt.io net and virt.io block stuff. Um, uh, hopefully with SMP uh, support, uh, multi core support and um, have this run, for example, even in maybe 12 months time, starting to use this not only here on um, prototyping vintage uh, boot stuff of Matrox Pahelia or Verge Voodoo stuff, but like certainly you need to start with some graphic acceleration, not, not supporting the latest internet AMD stuff that comes with uh, a 2000 page specification. Um, and starting to test this in the real world, meaning um, maybe in 12 months time, that would be the goal of this 25% hobby thing here on this channel, to have a small web server thing of proof of concept running that serves static web pages like either our uh, kernel placeholder or even the T2 uh, Linux stuff just to have this in production of testing of um, see how often something crashes and uh, how often people hack something there or something of that sort. And um, I, so if you want some something written in, in Rust, you have here Redux OS. Um, let me know if you tried that. And um, otherwise, that is what my con my conclusion of 20 years of experience and uh, certainly a couple of times having my fingers burned with latest and greatest stuff. And we will for sure continue, well, supporting Rust in compiling this 42, obviously, because we run Firefox, but um, follow this development. And I'm actually really curious to see where Rust will be in five and 10 years, because certainly there have been other languages. Um, certainly C++ is still successful, but D is certainly more uh, exotic. I leave in the comments below if you have ever tried D or if you whether you knew D existed, um, C sharp, uh, obviously, and uh, then go. Um, leave me in the comments below what modern languages languages go Rust, um, other fun stuff. Uh, Swift you tried also yeah Swift tried to package this right still um, didn't got that packaged. And what is your experience? And uh, what however we will do is um, in this code. Um, so this will be kind of, as I said, Rosetta code, kind of stuff of headers that like more hopefully trying to write headers so that they are somewhat freestanding, like Verge, Voodoo or NVIDIA, ATI, even modern cards, register definitions and functions and stuff that could be reused for your code um, and prototyping. Um, and then the additional code for our um, operating system driver stuff and um, yeah that uh, leave me in the comments below what you think about this in the ideal world there are of course other things for example I had this here already opened uh, we mentioned this or other people commented and I think I mentioned this already like uh, ZIG or um, general purpose language that look promising I have to say in, in some ways this ZIG looks even well certainly not as big as Rust and typed in stuff but this is also, for me, Rust is in some ways way too complex and large. Um, and um, in, But as I said, I'm not feeling as experimental of spending my time with new experimental languages. Actually, there's also some programmer of some game um, just right now. What What is that language? So there are right now a lot of new languages. There are some, some game developer of, of huge fame. Um, not John, John Carmack, but someone like, like him um, who is writing on some language, but that is only in some private better and not for public consumption. So there's actually uh, lots of stuff going on. So in an ideal world, I could, of course, write my own language and we will do some stuff. I said this or started this already uh, just in time compiling stuff. But as I said, I'm... Um, I'm sane, sane enough not to first write a language and then later write the operating system. Um, we will continue in parallel with this Lua derived just in time compiler stuff, similar to Lua JIT, just hopefully more readable and more portable. Maybe not as fast as Lua JIT in some ways, but hopefully more portable for this Java like kind of compile once and run everywhere thing, the JITing the, the whole user space, for example. And um, this is also the thing. So both of the things will be usable, for example, also in Linux. 
um, to have this kind of Lua based language um, and just in Tom compiler. Certainly I will even develop this on T2 Linux on Spark and MIPS and so on and RISC-V. Um, but, and this will be independently usable, right? Think a little bit like this Perl 6 parrot that somehow also never gets uh, finished. They try to cover everything. So this the good, the good thing is that all of those pieces are uh, usable as it. So the, the new code I want to write, so I said this before, who will bootloader, potentially maybe even firmware. And what I, I however will do, because certainly sticking with my own recommendations here of weekly IT news and, and uh, security vulnerabilities, Meaning we will not we will not use C for example C certainly I you see this here I think uh, twenty over twenty years experience I master C quite well certainly I probably could write some non crashing accelerated uh, scroll back there for text output that was recently deleted in the Linux kernel but even for me way too error prone way too time consuming and like wasting time on debugging memory corruption and whatnot. So C++, a lightweight usable subset of C++ it is and not using all the C stuff of string talk and manually like, like using string classes and like avoiding all the manual pointer arithmetic and uh, buffer fiddling stuff and a little bit like how you would do this but uh, to be fair and I said this before we had C++ already for a long time or other and other languages and for me it's surprising that Rust is so popular right now when for decades people did not make the best use of C++ sure there is Qt and KDE but I said this before recurring critique of the Linux user space like init system system the udev and all the file system tools like file system check and um, basically everything copy uh, copy move and um, wayland and xorg and stuff everything written in c so uh, said this before somehow decades of time not the best spent writing everything in manual point of fiddling and buffer over and under running c certainly a recurring theme of stuff that can go wrong will eventually go wrong and um, so yeah, using more higher level abstractions and, and some embedded C++ kind of thing, I will probably try to keep the headers C-ish so that, for example, Matrox Pahelia, um, probably something of this, I mentioned this because not only did we previously reverse engineer this bit, or also eventually um, the um, power VR that we still need to tackle uh, someday. Um, so that other people who would desperately want to write or copy and reuse this code for Linux kernel or Xorg while and stuff could do so. Um, so keeping the headers C-ish compatible, may maybe not necessarily always 100%, but that with minimal either preprocessor or manual editing, you could r remove some C++ ism and... Um, so to make the maximize the reusability of this kind of stuff. So I, this is this is a plan. Just wanted to keep a little bit updated, um, and with the Rust findings, especially um, this uh, really nice summary here. In case you're interested in more details or yeah, Scala, all the, the new languages in town, and also the stuff of uh, memory manager, like yeah, kernel memory leak offs, like yeah, can also. Um, stuff can also go wrong in, in Rust. So let's see how many people. So this is mostly the summary, the update of uh, this stream. And uh, I have here some, some stuff already accumulated the last month, a little bit busy. Um, so this channel, uh, hopefully more pre-edited uh, video, I have even more outstanding stuff to show you. And uh, the, the random live talk stuff more on the random live channel. And also 2021, the year we will finally uh, dedicate more time to this new code as outlined here. Um, uh, Roland uh, Okabo says it's a mistake to use nightly Rust. Um, uh, Marco says Rust is probably ideal for other things but not necessarily for operating systems. Um, I'm, yeah, maybe for sure for some things. 
Um, I would, however, also say I would say it's not ideal for UI stuff, especially, especially not like UI elements of buttons, windows, and stuff. Um, I think more dynamically typed stuff of the experience I gained the last years um, probably preferable um, of of more easily and dynamically connectable signal delivery stuff between. Um, UI elements and model model view controller stuff. Um, Acorides, guess would go for classless, fully morphismless C plus plus subset or more probably my choice. Uh, sick we mentioned. Um, so Marco sounds like he agrees something to what I probably will settle for. Um, Preprocessing stuff is a nightmare. So sick is. Um, C, C++ pre-processing and stuff is not yes. Um, also, I for sure agree that first C++ was not much, much de developed from 2000 to 2012 or so. And I, my impression is a lot of new stuff they add there is like also way too everything in the kitchen sink, way too complex and, and stuff I barely need. So um, also, yeah, as I mentioned, SICK uh, looks really nice. The only thing is... Um, I want more universal, shareable header stuff um, for other projects and not necessarily um, base my luck on a not mainstream language, but otherwise looks pretty interesting. Um, also, I will, I, I surely agree the preprocessor stuff could definitely be better. That is a little bit, I wish C and C++ in my opinion. Um, after that, lo uh, that, that long a time with that, I feel C and C++ could be a lot better if they would, like every decade, also remove some old craft. Um, for example, in C, like um, a lot of stuff, you would be surprised what works. Like what even works is like dereferencing because, uh, like dereferencing a pointer and um, adding subtracting a value. Uh, works in really bizarre ways of uh, being equivalent to array indexing and a whole lot of stuff like this. Also preprocessor that they can't be multi-line, um, which is a workaround with backslash, which, which works. Sure, it works, but makes debugging this stuff and working with this stuff certainly less ideal. And this, this are only like big examples. There are certainly many, many, many examples. Uh, for example, maybe C should have been long phased out in the 2000s with just using C++ and just as an example, right? Maybe the today's world, of course, a lot of people will be triggered and, and will hate this, but certainly people always yell bloat and, and whatnot, but you do not need to use all those features and um, like then using proper string classes of not manual pointer, character pointer fiddling there, and proper string um, functions or methods um, for not like string talk and, and, and whatnot, uh, and, and string lang and sn printf and, and whatnot stuff as it sure would have if decades ago deprecated and not been in, in, C9, uh, in, in C2012 um, or C++ uh, whatever. Uh, this probably would, I think, previous study shown was that 90% of all of this bugs and security vulnerabilities in manual pointer and memory handling and use after free and buffer over under run and stuff. And um, yeah, somehow it is surprising of how, how modern some IT stuff is, how uh, ancient other stuff like programming everything in C, especially in the open source world. I mean, ironically, outside of the open source world, like Windows and Mac OS C is oftentimes rarely seen and then only embedded firmware engineers more stick to that. Um, in general, I would not necessarily write uh, even 20 years ago before I even went to university, I would not have um, tackled a big mainstream triple a project in in c and that was already 20 years ago but yeah. anyway um of course in the user space so uh, you see here we will the, the 
fun thing here with this channel, I hope I'm bringing a little bit different context and um, alternatives. We will continue like low level code on RISC V, on the FPGA, um, on PowerPC, ARM, Spark. So we have different of low level stuff showing you the difference in open firmware, in um, x86 if you or stuff and uh, testing this uh, also in certainly QEMU and also real hardware as we have enough of that and potentially looking forward 2021 um, I have this uh, RISC V unmatched board on order that unfortunately is delayed um, current delivery estimate uh, March I think March, yeah, March 2021 um, they upgraded the memory though, so I hope it comes with 16 gigs of memory. That is certainly amazing. And I said this before, so not only Linux Risk V to come, but certainly also doing our own low-level stuff on there. And this comes with, I think, 100% open source firmware of Freedom firmware or uh, Freedom firmware or whatever. And uh, probably full C. I think I checked the website. I didn't find it there instantly. Uh, maybe actually, uh, whatever. Check another live stream, but. Um, we probably try, um, depending on how everything goes, maybe we try to uh, do a full stack uh, firmware there on this board. That would be amazing Of uh, because this microkernel idea of mine, I said this before, with like replacing firmware and the bootloader to have this all more integrated. So to have some um, HAL level and uh, maybe try this concept out on that board uh, if it ever arrives and uh, depending on how... Um, obscure that hardware is in regards to memory and PCIe and whatnot stuff. Um, uh, some more comments, what do we have there? But, so, um, Marco writes, Babelfish, Zircon, Nova, uh, Includers, many good C++ examples, kernel dev, just think it's error prone, uh, just think it's error prone and hard to achieve a common ground coding style you see in open source. Projects, um, yeah, I'm very much aware that there I quoted many, like even, I think you do, you mean probably Barrelfish, right? You wrote Babelfish. There's this Barrelfish of ETH Zurich and uh, Microsoft. Uh, Zircon, ah, right. So, and, and one thing I will probably do is, um, because it super annoys me in the Linux kernel that you have all the kernel-specific stuff like kmalloc and um, mapping pages and... Um, all the like you don't have a C or C++ standard library and stuff and so the amazing thing in this multi server microkernel is our my goal is to have drivers written with all the regular um, if you need to C but otherwise C++ functions with like malloc and opening files and stuff um, and this would even be quite shareable that um, you could have theoretically some Linux shim wrapper stuff there so that will be really interesting to see how that goes of writing drivers like because oftentimes you need quite complex functions of um, loading firmware or um, basically also sure there are some driver parts in linux like graphic drivers in direct render rendering interface shared objects but that will be an interesting thing to see how driver developing scales if you have user space drivers, something you don't usually have in Linux except QEMU and other um, f virtual in user space stuff there um, of modern or like USB. So that will be really interesting and in how much more readable, unit testable and virtualization friendable and reusable code that will shareable code um, that will produce and um, that is in my opinion the biggest difference also you see you've seen this here prototyping and that is also a big difference between monolithic old-fashioned kernels and modern kernels because if you prototype stuff you reverse engineer something like here matrox or usb stuff you sure write this first in user space because it's like 10 times faster and then why would you want to bring this back in some monolithic kernel thing when it's 10 times faster to write and prototype and user space, right? Um, one more uh, thing. Uh, also, yeah, this, um, because I only said this because it's Zircon in Fuchsier or Future there, um, is that it's the same thing of different 
API functions of even error handling of this. Uh, when I scroll over this already, all the set underscore zircon error handling, it's like, yeah. Um, this is, in my opinion, not ideal. Um, in my opinion, much easier to work with if you have a similar set of APIs and um, error handling codes and stuff that you are otherwise used to. Um, and now Glockus writes tiny go. Um, Sam writes uh, garbage collecting in kernel. I like, yeah, embedded Java, right? Um, Jarillo? Jar Jarillo. I would be useful to create some sort of prototype in JavaScript to run OS in the web browser. No, not really a web assembly. Um, so running this in, in the browser is not useful for me um, nowadays um, because this is way too different and way too far away and I can't use it for anything. Right? This is for me doing something in the browser. It's like, yeah, and, and then I can't use it anywhere. However, um, I said this before, theoretically for this JIT, uh, like Java kind, Java on steroids, compiled ones run it and anywhere. We, I said this before, we could use WebAssembly and run this. Um, and maybe this are things to come in 2021. The only thing is this WebAssembly infrastructure stuff today usually uses LLVM and this, that is a rather large uh, LLVM, maybe even Rust. And all of this is large, even compiling this on a 5950X here takes 20 minutes or what, depending on, on, on the packages. And uh, that is way too large code bases. So in the own just in time compiling, um, keep it stupid simple enablement. Maybe I support WebAssembly. We will see um, how complex it is to get that working. And uh, also this is prototyping nowadays with virtualization. It's much easier and convenient to just do this with QEMU, for example, QEMU KVM, uh, even testing Spark PowerPC and RISC V, and uh, that is much easier, faster, and uh, reusable than anything in the web browser. Anyway, so that, that is a summary of that. I hope um, that gives you some inspiration of what to choose for your projects. You probably not don't write a OS but maybe you write drivers or some other firmware. Um, also for firmware projects, I would in general not recommend um, C for low level microprocessor firmware stuff uh, for the many reasons you've seen this internet of things, all the firmware, even TCP IP stacks. I mean, thankfully there are like six open source TCP IP stacks, but as seen by previous videos, all unfortunately full with buffer over underruns and security vulnerabilities, which is rather sad. And something that um, probably with some nicer memory buffer um, bound obstruction stuff in C++, potentially even in IoT firmware, things much safer without the need to go all the way to Rust. And as you see, you in the end might need unsafe stuff in Rust anyway, and then uh, you might have bugs or um, memory, uh, oops, memory leaks. Um, in the kernel. Anyway, so yeah, that is the summary and uh, part of the outlook for 2021. Uh, um, and um, yeah, also don't forget to these two channels, right? Um, for uh, best viewership entertainment stuff, live channels, most likely only the more live channel, which, um, oops. Wrong focus, um, YouTube, uh, more of me here, more René Rebe. And um, hello, can we also load this or is internet now already frame dropping? You get, can we, hello, hello, YouTube, someone there. Anyway, so yeah, that, that is a more, more live stuff. Um, for 2021, we will probably separate that more just for the, um, best match for you and people who don't like that live discussion stuff don't need to see that and um, yeah that's it for today i hope you learned something have a good sunday uh, sun day or night and i hope to see you soon for all